Hello, Greg Keyes back again for this series of presentation performance skills. This is the third uh, little segment and this one is actually on performance dynamics as in how to bring the whole body alive to transfer the message. We all know that it's only around 7-8% of what we say is what conveys a message. The rest is 93% of the body, tone, inclination, the way you say it, the highs and lows, uh, so many different things, the power of silence. And you're wondering what silence is, in other words, breaking things in the middle of a sentence so that you hold the audience in the palm of your hand. Little things like that. Well, what I'm going to do is a series of four little characterizations. This is something you can do at home, obviously, you might feel a little bit silly, and particularly for auditory communicators, because they're, they're the people that actually find it very hard to actually feel comfortable in front of an audience in, away from a lectern or away from a book, so that they actually have fun with what they're doing, so they can jump around and make people laugh. And this is a good way of actually breaking that down, so you, let, you start feeling a little bit relaxed. I'm going to do four characters. The first character is, uh, they're all characters I've done from different shows, and the first one is Dr. Carrasco uh, from the Night of Mirrors segment of Men of La Mancha. Then I'm going to turn around and come out and do the first character in the first professional show I ever did, which was Wind in the Willows, Dear Old Badger. They're all only little segments, otherwise this video will go on for ages. So I'm going to then come out and it's going to again show dynamics, the way I control silence, the way I control focus with my hand gestures, the way I open up my hands, as in depictions in religious photos. You always see people like Jesus. In that, those people have open hands. In other words, it's inviting. A stage proscenium, for instance, is an open type book, so you invite people in. That's what you do in performance techniques. The third character I'm going to do is, hmm, let me think, Night of Mirrors, nice character, dear old, I, I don't know, I did a music called, called My One and Only, and I did a character called Mr. Magics, uh, and it's set in New York, around Broadway, and uh, so I do that character. And then I'm going to finish off with a character uh, from a lovely musical called Fiddler on the Roof. The character is Tevia. And again, it just shows a little inclination to link in with the highs and lows in tonal quality that are covered in the first and second sections of projection and articulation and using little accents and that. And I'm the worst person in the world for accents. But it gets the old mouth and articulation and the muscles working. So let's start. Is there one here that calls itself Don Quixote de la Mancha? If there is, and he be not afraid to look upon me, let him Stand forth. Now hear me, thou charlatan. <laughs> thou art no knight but a foolish pretender. And thy principles dirt beneath thy feet. Now, the very next time this happens, <laughs> I shall be exceedingly angry. I, I've had to speak about it before, and I don't want to have to speak about it again. But, but I will not have somebody sitting down on me in such an independent sort of a way. Now, who is it this time? Well, oh, come on. Speak up. Well, if it's only you, that's <laughs> You're walking down Fifth Avenue, man, in your business. And the most attractive woman you have ever seen. Dressed in fur from head to toe, with a little poodle dog by her side, comes strolling out of Tiffany's. You've never wanted anyone the way you want that woman. Tell me, what do you do? I'll tell you. 
You walk up to her and you say, Excuse me, ma'am, but I'm a stranger in this here town and, well, <laughs> I was wondering if you'd be kind enough to show me the way to your apartment. <laughs> so, you're up in her apartment. You're sitting down. A little poodle dog wants to play and she says, I'll go and sleep on something a little more comfortable. And while she's out of the room, <laughs> you pick up a ball and you throw it and the poodle dog brings it back. <laughs> you throw it again and the poodle dog, he brings it back again. <laughs> you throw it again. The ball goes out the window. <laughs> the dog goes out the window and she lives on the 32nd floor. What do you say when she returns? No, 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 you don't say anything. You take a ride out to a fancy restaurant and whilst you're casually buttering your roll, you say, you know, your dog seemed very depressed this evening. A fiddler on the roof. Sounds crazy, no. But all of us is a fiddler on a roof. Trying to scratch out a simple little tune without getting his feet wet. Now, you may ask, why does he stay up there if it is so dangerous? He stays because it is tradition. And apart from our traditions, we all have our dreams. And one of those dreams is that this man should be a rich man. <laughs> if I were a rich man, diddle 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 dum. And there, ladies and gentlemen, it's highs and lows, different sizes in performance realms. Notice how I went down lower in performing dear old badger in little snippets of tevia, but I opened myself up when doing the Night of Mirrors from Men of La Manger. Control of focus with my hands. Power of silence by stopping things in the middle. So many different dynamics that you can do just by taking little characterizations, practicing in front of a mirror and watching yourself. Thank you very much. And that's it for today. A little bit cooler today. <laughs>